Well, good morning, everybody. As you can see, I'm uh, sweating here. It's absolutely scorching here in the northwest of Ireland. And uh, I, t I don't do heat well. I like the cold because you can put on clothes. But uh, I mean, I know what heat is. I mean, I've been through the equator. I've lived in places like Alabama and stuff like that. So and I know I know what heat is like, but uh, I, I just don't do it well. But anyway, this is this is how summer used to be in Ireland when I was a kid, and uh, very warm in the day, and cools down in, at night. Actually, perfect summer, so you, you get a good night's sleep. Of course, we just called that. S s good morning, everybody. Uh, we just called that. S we just got that summer back then. Now it's climate change. I I picked up. I I I know some of you. You know, like I said. Uh, I've redeemed myself on Enoch Burke and part of my my own road to Damascus to use a Christian terminology to reform myself is that over the years I get so many messages from people saying Thomas I can't believe you, you don't care you don't really like Led Zeppelin and uh, you don't you don't you don't you don't like Led Zeppelin and uh, well then I don't like him I just never got into them and then I had people badgering me, saying, no, you really need to sit down and, and give them a chance. And, uh, which I never did, I have to say. My, my thing of Led Zeppelin is either hippies growing up in Dublin when I was a punk, and also when I lived in America. This is WKRP, and, you know, WZIW, you know, an era, and then, you know, the opening bars of, uh, you know, good times, bad times, or something like that. And I never liked Robert Plant screaming, it wasn't for me. But to redeem myself, a chap called Wayne, I got a copy of, a lovely chap here I'm at today, it's like a, a copy of Led Zeppelin's uh, Mothership. So I'm going to give this a go. I promise you Led Zeppelin fans out there, I will give Led Zeppelin uh, a go. Because my knowledge of them is zero, really. It, other than like the, 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 the five or six famous songs. Uh, I don't, I really don't know enough about them. And that's how I realised I was being kind of like, you know, close-minded so uh, though so you led Zeppelin you led Zeppelin fans out there take comfort in that I'm going to give them a chance at least so well it wasn't my music growing up really you know it wasn't you know I, the punk you know the first stuff I got into was like Bowie and Roxy music and uh, and you know I was only soon into that and then punk rock exploded so it was like I went straight from like sort of like what they called glam or art rock back then into into like punk so I did you know it just completely bypassed me I didn't have that stay I mean I liked the new wave of British heavy metal big time when that kicked off you know like Motorhead and early Iron Maiden and early Saxon and you know all those kinds of bands and um uh, but and I, I, I just they just they just never said Zeppelin was just never in my focus, but they are now. So um, so uh, so uh, yeah. So speaking of uh, misjudging Ted Ted Kaczynski, uh, that's probably guaranteed. This this video will be pulled down now, and. Um, when that was going on back in the day, I was confused. I was living in America when that was all going down, and I can remember it, and I, rem I can remember as clear as day the letter in the New York Times, and the essay that was published on the Industrial Society, and I read it and I said, I can't disagree with any of this, but why is he blowing people up? And that always like stuck with me, I was like, you, you blew people up, I mean... And then now, I, now I realise this is before I fully understood how how controlled the media is, and it was literally the only way that he was guaranteed to get that front page manifesto printed. And I can remember like all the papers, like the New York Times and the New York News, Daily News, and Long Island Newsday, all talking about it was, it was the deluded rantings of an insane madman. It was nothing. It was nothing of the sort. Nothing at all. Uh, it actually all made perfect sense. 
and particularly back then it seemed like the left were dead and dusted and here he was talking about the left and the danger it represents to the human race uh, through its clandestine interference in human human destiny and uh, it's it's fra you know he was talking about the, the alphabet people back then being part of the the, the 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 great danger awaiting us and i remember thinking like well and to me i was like the only gay people i knew of them were like people who were in broadway musicals and stuff i i didn't but it wasn't the gay people it was the energy the the capitalization of their cause it's just like black people the capitalization of their cause uh, by the globalists and he's right though about pollution because I, I find it quite ironic that all these communes are all have us all. Well, they're not. You know, we know climate change isn't really about pollution; it's about control. But why they're obsessed with CO two, which is plant food, right? If you look at the let the communist countries, they have a horrific environmental record. All of them, you know, some of the things, some of the stuff that happened: Romania, and Bulgaria, Poland, East. You know, all of them, Cuba. They all have horrific environmental problems they would like literally just pump their sludge in into in into the you know they wouldn't they wouldn't they had no they didn't do anything to dispose of it well well the so-called capitalist countries yes there was a lot more pollution when, when i when i was growing up but we didn't dump effluent or factory output waste directly into rivers that had all stopped by the by the 1930s and 40s you know if it, if it, if it even happened it never happened really but like, in the, you know, in the, no regard for, I mean, I've seen videos and photographs of kids swimming in like s f absolute filthy water f with a big huge factory next to it in like places like, you know, Moldova. And that was going on till the 2000s. You know, the legacy of the communists. So this whole thing of the, the left and environmentalism, they have the worst environmentalism record of anyone. Anyone. So anyway, he made, so anyway, Kaczynski made it to 81, which is surprising us that long. And uh, I now understand that there was a means to the madness. It's unfortunate that it has to happen, but there you go, it happened. And uh, he, he got the result he was after. And loads of us back in the day who were like, either this guy's a crazy murderer or were like, this is just bonkers. I wasn't like that. I did. I did think he was a, a, a megalomaniac. I even wrote about it in one book. I now see that I was. I was still had my peace and love glasses on me, and you realise that there is an element. You know, there is a point where you put down the philosophy and pick up the sword. And uh, it does happen. It does happen. It will happen. I've no doubt about that. Uh, in Ireland and many countries, the sword, and like at UK especially, and we've seen it lately, uh, the picking up of the sword will be any kind of sexual transgression towards children, that legalising it. And that's their, that's their ultimate objective, because as part of, to, to replace us all with transhumanist robots, the final barrier is the family. That's why they hate the, they hate the Enoch Burke family here, Enoch Burke's family here in Ireland. And this is why the legalisation of paedophilia and to get children away from their parents ASAP and put them in put and put the state in charge of them this is why Ireland has a minister for children and it's always alphabet people who get the job uh, the minister the ministry for children in Ireland is just a way of the government saying to the people you don't own your kids anymore we do you remember that Irish family members you remember that they they don't they 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 own your children you don't own them they like, like to have a ministry for transport because they own the railways and the buses and the, the roads and the shippings and the ferries. They have a ministry for health because they own the hospitals, the clinics. They have a ministry for education because they own schools and universities. And by extension, by logical extension, the only reason they have a ministry of children is because they own your children. Now you let that one sink in. And then ask yourself, why is it always alphabet people in, in the charge of that position? It doesn't take a lot, does it, to to bring that one to conclusion? But that will be that that will be that's the one that the the, the the most I think most terrifying thing of all that is the fact that this is the hill they're willing to die on. When you I know I keep going on about Pascal Donny, the Irish Minister of Finance, but when you 
When you have a Minister for Finance willing to destroy himself for drag queen story time, you understand that the ideology of these people is more important to them than anything else. They must, uh, they must bring the child to sexual awareness as soon as possible. It's so important to them. You have every politician in every country now, almost every politician in every country, who sits there, who puts on his clothes, his suit in the morning, goes into the government buildings, and no matter what his brief is, Minister for Railways, Minister for Aviation, Minister for Defence, Minister for Agriculture, his, his first thing in the morning is saying, how can we bring children into sexualization consciousness, consciousness at an earlier age? Now you remember that. And, you, and that those of you who are laughing at me right now, I can guarantee you in 20, 30 years time, when you have the Love is Love Act passed in your government, or the protection of... See, they'll wrap it up as something as protection of children from from sexual exploitation. So we call the child the, the child protection act, but it, it won't be to protect children from from nonsense. It'll be to protect children's rights to have a relationship with a fifty or forty five year old man. And they will call, this is how they operate. This is how they function. So you remember that you every when every when a politician comes to your front door looking for your vote, whether he's a councillor, we've seen the loads of them been done for being nonsense, all the way up to someone who's going to get a ministerial position, all the way up to that. Remember that you're, you're, he's, he's putting a hand out to you that he, when he goes back to his constituency office, he's literally, look, he or she is literally looking for ways to sexualise children and to make it legal. Above all else, everything else is secondary. Because it's all about destroying the family. They destroy the family, they destroy the society. They destroy the society, they can get rid of us and replace us with robots more effectively. See, if you, if you, if the, if, if you, if you're, see, they've already began with the needlecraft. The needlecraft was the stage one. If a parent would allow a government body to put a transnational corporation's product inside their arm without fully testing it, fully thinking about it fully wanting to investigate it and or you know or whatever just purely based on Stephen Colbert dancing with with fruits dressed as vaccines needles around him or little kids on the late night show here in Ireland injecting their dolly or Big Bird or Oscar, you know Cookie Monster Oscar the Grouch or Emo or any of them if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to have an, a substance injected into your child just based on that, it, your stewardship of your child is now over. It, you know, your child doesn't belong to you anymore. And then to go and very, then to go and do, pick, do boast about it on Twitter and other other places, you, you you're sick. Now they've already gotten to doing that. What's the next step? Well, replace the the syringe within a penis. That's the next thing. And they'll be boasting about all those Karens, all those mothers, they'll be boasting about it. You know, oh, I'm so, well, you always see them go, you always see all these head cases going on about the non-binary children. Or you see these videos by these Karens saying, I was in Target yesterday and they had all the pride stuff and my child was so happy. And now they've moved the pride stuff to the back or took it out and my child is sad. I mean, this is what you're up against. This this is this is a leg this is that this is what you're up against, and uh, uh, this is the this is this is the one that will remove the sword from the sheath. I know it's probably what's already in Ballymun and where I grew up. The I think the primary factor there was protecting your children. The sword was removed from the sheath, and it will happen. And it's the working class. You know, it's just like Orwell said in 1984, if there's any hope, it lies with the proles. And we saw that in here in the Ballymun. Thing, let's trim that. Stephen Sutton's song. You know, no, he won't shut up. And that video, very moving. I'll put a link to it at the end of this, at the end of this if you haven't seen it. Yeah, the working class stood up. And that's what you saw, like, in... And, and natural law rewards you for this. You're rewarded. Uh, the gods stand by you. Look, I'll give you an example that didn't happen in Ireland. When you had that quarter-final, that semi-final game between West Ham and Alkmaar in Holland, and all the the all, all the, the, the the ultras started to try and invade the 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 family stand, 
where all the West Ham fans were, and one big, one big lout, one big man, a man, a real man, who would probably be called a gammon by the mid upper middle class, battered them all down and saved these sa saved kids and women in the ground from being hurt, and uh, from these 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 fellows who can only attack women and kids, and uh, these so-called hard boys, you know, and. Uh, would all be extreme lefties by the way and uh, West Ham went on to win, win, win the Europa League, Europa League Conference Cup in the next game that was the gods moving everything out of their way uh, because natural law that man stood at the top of the steps invoking natural law and uh, you can see how the mainstream media did not want to give him any credit you could see that they were they were they barely wanted to even talk about it uh, they barely wanted to even talk about it why because they don't want the world seeing what a real man is like protecting women and children from violence or and uh, it also was a serve to remind them that for all the idiots out there with the the rainbow flags on their profile pic that uh, there's still too many of men out there who will say you're not getting anywhere near the kids you can do whatever you want you're not getting anywhere and that you know and this is very frightening to the middle classes because the middle classes the middle class normies when i say middle class i'm not talking about american middle class american middle class is much closer to european working class i'm talking about not so much in economic status i'm talking about in, in sort of like culture ideals the middle class in Britain and Ireland are very different. They'd be more what you Americans would call, you know, they're more like the, you know, yang up, upper, upper, you know, money, sn snooty snobs, you know, that kind of thing. The hoi polloi. And uh, even if their income would not be as much higher than the working class, they behave, it's a cultural thing, they behave superior. And their world is controlled exclusively by anxieties. Uh, anxieties are what the neighbours will think of them. Remember Mrs. Bucket in that show, Keeping Up Appearances. Anxieties of how people think about them. Oh, you know, and they when they close when they fall asleep at night, they will do anything to fit in, and that includes not only injecting their own, having their own child injected with an experimental drug, in order to boast about it, but also to have their child injected with a man's penis, if that's what the zeitgeist, what the what the what the uh, the establishment, what the the code of the day required. Why? Because it's all about conformity and fitting in. And those and and I knew a ninety nine point nine 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 percent of these radicals or the people who call them resistance come from them families and, and wealthier, and are about enforcing those those establishment ideas while calling themselves the resistance i mean the writing was on the wall when brexit happened and you had anarchists in trafalgar square protesting the brexit vote vote they don't even know what an anarchist is they think it, they, they they think it's it's a left-wing activist this is this is you know an active you know an anarchist like me a traditional anarchist like me does not believe that there should be no government of course not there should be no philosophical drive behind a government so a government is purely an administrative body there's a, a group to run the railways a group to run the airlines a group air, the airports a group to run the schools the hospitals the justice system but they do not have a philosophical mandate and they purely function according to right and wrong by natural law so if someone hurts another person they get criminal problems and that kind of thing and they're punished but it does they're not punished because of a war on crime or a socialist mandate or anything there's absolutely no philosophy and that's why i'm an anarchist there's a, a governments are purely administrative bodies there's no no a philosophic philosophical mandate of any kind it purely goes on common sense and natural law i would compromise on libertarianism uh, but not the American version of libertarianism. It's that, that's that's getting that's too close to like conservatism. But like the classic libertarianism is like the government that just stays out of my life as much as possible. And that's it. That's that'll be my philosophy. 
and uh, no, that they're, they're the other way around. These these middle these ones who are fighting for who call themselves the resistance are resisting freedom, and they're resisting autonomy. They're resisting sovereignty. And woke is, of course, the big part of that. Now it's all dying. June to June twenty twenty three. It's ironic how the book ends again. You know, like nine eleven. New York was covered in smoke. That's when the wave function was was rising or started. 9-11, now we have New York covered in smoke again. We had the Ted Kaczynski Unibomber, and now we have the Ted Kaczynski the other end of the scale, where people say, well, he was right. Everything he said in that essay about the Industrial Society was absolutely bang on. He said nothing that, was, that didn't pan out. And here we are. And in fact, it's actually gone further than what Ted Kaczynski has warned. That's how far away, that's how different life was back then. That his worst nightmare has actually gone, has actually got, has actually been surpassed. His worst warning has actually been surpassed. So, so everywhere I go, I meet people all over the place, and they all say, I hear, I hear a random voice going, "Hey, Thomas," and they'll say, "Thank you so much for getting me through the lockdown," and I'll say, "Oh no, no, thank you for helping me get through it too," and then I'll say, "But don't give up. This isn't that the lock. It didn't end with the lockdown." That was a test to see how far they could push us. Now they pushed us too far, but I said always remember. I said don't think, don't be negative about it, but always be vigilant. Remember, we were to be part of an ongoing medical, a medical, a pharmacocracy, where we couldn't do anything unless we had our shots updated every year, and that's what they were. That's what they were after, and now they don't even have that back pass. We beat them. We beat them. And how do we beat them? Just by saying no. There's, you see, there's tremendous power in the world. No, it's it's the thing that someone said in that that you Leonard, you that you Leonard play da, where he, where his father says to Martin Sheen, his Irish father says to Martin Sheen, you'll never be a man unless you know, learn how to use the word no. Gosh, isn't that truth? Isn't so much truth in that? There's so much truth in that. But uh, uh, yeah, so you know, we've all we've got the collapse wave functions inside ourselves. I did with like Neenock N- Borg, but that, then again, I, I do have an excuse there. His family going on about pagans bothered me, but they didn't know what pagans are. And uh, now that now that's I'm trying to help people understand what we are. We're not we're not these like fruits who stand outside yurts with a, a staff and a boner you know that kind of thing and we're not you're not wiccans it's a it's the final show of season one of hocus focus tonight and it's on my beyond room 313 channel excuse me <coughs> my 313 channel and um it's got some funny stuff at the end you'll enjoy that and uh and then we, myself and Sarah, will be back on July thirtieth, because we're both. I'm so busy, and we, she, she, we've got things. Both of us have things to do to get tidy up ends, and we'll have a special announcement at the end of the show that it would be really cool. So, uh, uh, you know, have a lovely Sunday. I might make another video later on, and uh, when it's, if it cools down a bit, and you look after yourselves, and remember, uh, the further they push. I mean, we should take solace from the whole Kaczynski thing, that the majority of people would have considered him a nut back then, but now the majority of people are saying everything he said was true. So uh, never be afraid to be a nut job, but only resort to violence if, it's, if, if you have nothing else left to lose. And if you have children and they come for them or they try to sexualize all children, you remember the names of all those politicians and you start collecting lists. And, and remember, see, a lot of this stuff is civil servants as well. A lot of them are unelected civil servants pushing this stuff through. So remember, the civil service is actually a bigger enemy than the, than the politicians. Even if they're just regular civil servants, it's Orwell warned us. The inner party, the establishment, the outer party, the civil servants. And if there's hope, it lies with the proles. Lie with the proles. Take care. Look after yourselves.